Okay, guys, uh, we are gathered here to uh, for demo day for the first project of the full cycle pro course. Uh, is quite similar to the, the basic course, so we are going to present our game, uh, our progress, what went well, what went wrong, and we need to share our experience for the first project, what we learned from the uh, the course in the past two months, and uh, then we need to share, uh, you know, uh, what we did in the the current project. So we'll prepare it for the next project as well. Uh, and um, after the the presentation, uh, please run your game in your PC. So we need to test your your game one by one, the group and to see how it's feeling and uh, then uh, you can talk about your, your plan for the next step of the, the project. Yeah, just that, uh, we need to uh, start uh, with the first team. Yes, yeah, so we are team one. Um, our project is like a shooter, first person shooter, fast pace. Uh, what's your name? Who are you? I'm Nicolas. Maybe you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's, I'm, yeah. I'm Jan. And the third guy is uh, Jürgen, he couldn't be here. Uh, so yeah, this uh, is a third person, a first person shooter game, a face pace uh, shooter. So yeah, we started with a basic idea, we started putting some stuff together. Um, I don't know what, what went well or what went wrong? So, well, what uh, went well, right, is that the game we produced, like compared to the other project, we probably put like a third of the time into this project. Like we had less time anyway, and we also didn't like have a, as, mu as much crunch, but we got like re relatively like the same amount of game in like f only a third of the time. So we definitely improved from the last time. And also what like definitely went well is like uh, communication between uh, each other um, when it came to planning. We'll get back to this. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we were all on the same page when it came to like making the game. Uh, yeah, I think also something else was the, the game playability system. Uh, it was a really useful tool to put stuff together fast uh, without doing a lot of checking of stuff, only like with the tags and everything, it's like really easy to, to make something, uh, to get something going there. Um, yeah, overall, yeah. Frame, yeah. F just framework in general. Like uh, if you compare the, uh, our previous projects, like if you start working on this game and you want to do something, you can actually find where stuff is and it's, uh, it makes sense. You're not gonna find random variables in the player character anymore. Uh, uh, there's still a few because, yeah, it was cool, but yeah. yeah. And uh, then what went bad? Now, this comes back to communication. Well, we were on the same page about like, making the game. Then the way we divided the tasks, uh, we went wrong with that. And what we pretty much had, we had a uh, Jorgen working on one task for how many weeks? A lot, probably. Uh, it was a big task, and maybe it was better just to split it. Um, so I think that was something that uh, didn't really help. Uh, and we have to like redo a lot of things at the end to make something going because we, we didn't have a lot of time. Yeah, we pretty much, uh, so about like six weeks of uh, Jorgen's work, we just had to scrap it because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is uh, yes, uh, unfortunate. So we had him making the guns and uh, it wasn't uh, made with gas, and he didn't like exactly know what uh, what he was doing, and we uh, we kind of left it to him, and he didn't really communicate with us that he doesn't know what we're doing, and we didn't like push enough, so it was like kind of miscommunication there, and therefore we lost the time with that. Yeah, and we switched to gas, and it was like I don't know. I think in two days we we had like the, the two weapons going with everything. It was like so easy to to make. Uh, yeah, but that basically, I think, was the... That was like the main blunder, yes. The, yeah, the main idea. So next up, who did what? Uh, who did what? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, That's I a did, good question, yeah. Uh, I did uh, mostly the enemies, and I did the maps. 
uh, then we all shared like uh, frameworks, so the basic framework stuff that you don't exactly see in the game, but it's supposed it's like there to make things work. Uh, we all divided that up. Then Nicholas he set up uh, gas for everything. He worked on the guns, uh, the grapple. Uh, I worked uh, on abilities. The Jorgen uh, most of his time was spent on the weapon that we scrapped, but he also did uh, the framework. And then yeah, uh, future plans. So what we would do uh, with this game is add assets. Uh, you will see that we don't have uh, all the assets for this, or like many textures and stuff. We would definitely add those. And we would make the game uh, perhaps a little longer. All right, and I guess what we would do for future is figure out what the exact settings are for the game, because the uh, built version does not really run that well. And it works significantly uh, better on the engine in terms of FPS. So, the player has multiple guns. Uh, if you kill all the enemies, then you get put into the next uh, section, the next level. You have the fireball, you have the dash. And we have different types of enemies. So we have like stationary enemies, or enemies uh, that move on land, but since you know they don't really have land to move on, then they just stay still. And we have the flying enemies. And that's the main core of our game. There's one left? Yeah. yeah. He's hiding. Ooh. No. Kill him, I think. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think I'd skip it. <laughs> yeah, basically that that's it. I don't know any any question. Uh, I, to me, it seems like all, every single effect was like the lady behind the character. You just fire and the fire will come from there. And when you fire the grapple, it's like the thing came from where you were before. Is that a bug or is that? No, I think it's like a lot with the FPS. The grapple is like uh, running on tick. Uh, so in the build, it's like it's not behind. It's using a socket to get the location. Um, maybe that's why uh, the low FPS maybe looks like that. I, I'm not sure because I, I didn't really no, he probably try it the, in the build the gun. a lot. The gun, uh, yes. It's uh, also like FPS dependent, but it's not anchored to the like barrel, so it doesn't follow the gun. That's something we could fix, but it's there for now. No, I think it's attached to the socket, but something went, I, I think, was wrong there. And we didn't like, put time into it because there are a lot, there, we had a lot of things to, to really do than just VFX and stuff, you know? But I think it's attached in the gameplay queue. Uh, there is a socket there. And we also a lot of things that, um, that they were there that we didn't go into like, looking for VFX and stuff. Uh, Jorgen put something at the beginning. And then I was like, okay, I have this, I'm gonna put it there. And yeah, it's like falling behind, but there's something going on there probably. It's not like a touch or the BFX, it's just maybe there, and I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Jackie, your game has potential to be multiplayer, I think, with this mechanic to play the match. Yeah, I think a little bit, because uh, when we were about to make the enemies, I was like, okay, maybe I can just put like, do it multiplayer in the first time and just, uh, but then uh, we did some st stuff like in a bad practice, you know, get player character and some of that things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, instead of like redoing or changing stuff, I was like, now I'm gonna just make the enemy and, and that's all. Because also the idea is not to make a multiplayer game. Uh, and probably there will be a lot, a lot other things that you need to deal that I wasn't thinking at the moment. But, but you have time to work on it in the next project? Yeah, probably, yeah. Also, like the gas is in the player yeah. state, so it's like mm -hmm. it's there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like most of the stuff is, it's like working correctly and in the right place and stuff. So. It's yeah, not too much I, I don't think it's gonna be too hard. This is stuff we yeah. wouldn't do for this project because it's not a priority. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, 
the idea for a project was to have like a battle royale type of game um, where you are forced to go towards the center where you will have more and more enemies um, and then like be the last one alive and there's also a way to get out by using a jetpack which is in the middle of the level um, so to win you would either escape with a jetpack or kill all your enemies and uh, actually it was when I had this idea at first I thought oh that's not enough so we need to add more features um, but they ended up not making it to the game. The idea was to have basically a second part to the game like where you would not know in advance what's in the middle. It could be a jetpack or there could be like doors in the underground that would give, bring you to an underground level and there would be a boss. And so if you make it to the boss, then you cannot win if you're alone. So it would be a bad idea to kill everybody. Uh, but if you need the jetpack, then uh, you don't want competitors. But anyway, so right now we just have the jetpack part. Um, and the idea was to have a game fairly short that can play in about five minutes. Um, so what went well or what went wrong first? <laughs> um, I guess, so on, on my part, um, I took care of the gameplay abilities and that was hard <laughs> for me. Uh, it took me, I took like maybe four weeks just to try to wrap my head around gas. And then I realized that I, I wanted to start with the shooting ability. And then I realized that actually I did not have enough clarity about just how to make a shooting mechanic with gas or without gas. Um, so, if, and also it was about also, it was really hard. I mean, I was blocked, I think, by not really understanding how to make the shooting mechanics. Um, but once I got that started and started to add gas and you know, trial and error, it got easier. And then it became, I could see the benefits of it because sometimes you want to add one new ability. Like the first ability took me four weeks, but the next one took me a day. So, um, and then it was half a day to add a new one. Um, yeah, and so, so like, uh, Michael worked on uh, tools. So we started with a custom uh, movement component for uh, sliding. The idea is like you're, you're skiing down the mountain. Mm -hmm. And you cannot go up the mountain. You can only go down. Uh, so you can change, you can rotate to go more to the right or more to the left, but never to the point where you would go back uphill. Uh, so that's the, uh, the way to force players to go down. Um, so the, the name of the game, Viking Die, is kind of so in, inspired from cold Nordic countries, I would say. Um, not naming names. So there's a Viking aspect and die because that's what players do a lot. And it was also uh, in reference to the VKND map in PUBG, uh, which is in the snow. So it was, yeah. Um, yeah, so we had, uh, so what went well actually is that we were able to really separate tasks. So. Um, so like uh, Tom started on a movement component, a custom one made in C++ for sliding. Then Michael took over all the movement of the game. Uh, I focused on gas and then level design. Uh, Tom did all the AI. Uh, both Michael and I did some of the UI. So, and we had, um, we, by subclassing the character, um, like Michael could have all the movement in one character class. I subclassed it and I did all the shooting mechanic and gas in that subclass and then Tom subclassed it for all the AI. So that was, that worked really well. Um, yeah, what did not work as well, like for me it was like being stuck and overall I feel like, I don't know exactly why, but it felt like we were like slugging around trying to make, like kind of struggling to make progress um, and it kind of unstuck just the last couple of weeks. Um, so, and do you want to add anything at the moment? No, but not yet, okay. And uh, so yeah, Tom can play the game. Uh, there are still some, we have one bug that we can figure out still. Uh, <laughs> Oops, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but? No bugs. Plan for future. Well, uh, it would be a good candidate for a multiplayer game uh, because right now we're using bots. Um, and yeah, like personally, in terms of uh, the full cycle course, I kind of like the idea of working on different projects. So I'm not sure I would want to finish this one right there. Um, but yeah, I think just extending it to multiplayer, fixing the bugs, 
and polishing a lot of a lot more things. Like all the art was just added the last few days. Um, but uh, yeah, is that something? Get, uh, What's not working? Oh yeah. Oh, we need to. Um, we we yeah. So yeah, there are no bugs at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this one is starting with 99 bots, so it's a big map, kind of. Um, and you can shoot with a left click, you can do a melee with right click, and you can press E to throw a grenade. Um, yeah, and there are some pickups, ammo, like you can pick up grenades, it will give you one grenade, or ammo will, will should give you nine bullets. Uh, I, the goal was to have not too many ammo, so you have to really manage the ammo you have. Um, so you start with 18. Um, yeah. So maybe try to win. I don't know. <laughs> with a jetpack. Be good. Yeah. So yeah, one bug we have that I can figure out is like we have some invisible bots that are still killing us. So some AI uh, characters turn invisible. Their meshes turn invisible. Everything is there, logic is there, they're shooting, they're dying. Yeah. Uh, is it a feature or a bug? Which one? That they turn invisible and kill it. Uh, it's a bug. <laughs> That's a bug. Um, no. <laughs> no. To be honest, uh, no. no. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. They do on a sliding also. They're fighting the each other. Is, uh, is quite small and they're moving so fast, so they prefer like um, melee or not. How, how many bots are in the, in the map? 99. 99. 99 right now? <laughs> yeah. You can see on the top yeah, on right, top, um, top right. So the number of players alive. Oh, he lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On top right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Say again? Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, and actually Tom was working. Uh, so the thing is, like, uh, like Tom was doing the AI, but the abilities for shooting and everything were not ready until like very recently. So we didn't have much time to test. So there were a lot of last minute fixes and everything. Like we had eight builds just today, for instance. Um, but yeah, like basically the idea was to have different personalities for the bots. Some of them would just try to get the jetpack. Some might try to fight. Um, some might try to pick up things. We also wanted to have power-ups that would increase your damage or your armor, but you don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> milling each other. Street fighting. Yeah. <laughs> For collectible, it should be a standout from the environment. Say again? Collectible. The armor yeah. should be a standout from the other uh, environment. Stand out more, you yeah. mean be more visible? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. actually even had uh, something. Like a, like a tree, like yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. should be quite a clean Yeah. Yeah, that's why we made it kind of big. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking maybe some effect that would add more yeah, lights so or some animations. For, for some time. Uh, it was a collision sphere. Ah, yeah. it's <laughs> Which is not invisible. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Um, the S no is attached to the camera, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a pretty big effect, so it doesn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, and sometimes, like, I. Like the jetpack sound was something that it does like a little like like a breathing sound and then it starts. Mm. So to match it, then we put a delay before you start the jetpack, which actually works really well. Yeah. So you're flying on a jetpack, but it's slow, so um, other players or oh, you can shoot down. Right. The, uh, if the AI is flying with the jetpack, you can shoot it and then take the jetpack from the dead body. Mm. So yeah. while the jetpack, you can move left or right. And yeah, you can. Slowly. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, fun to test around to put the movement quite fast, flying around on this beautiful map. It was actually a very good feeling. 
fun, but uh, that, that wasn't the point of the game. You, uh, you want to be able to shoot it when it's going up. So, um, Hi. So uh, we are team four, and uh, we made a horror game again. <laughs> you see that here? That's that's me. I uh, pretty much made the level design, the whole narrative, if you can call it that. And I'm Kevin, and uh, I was the main programmer, if you can say that. The only programmer, basically. <laughs> the only programmer. So what was the idea behind this build of ours? Well, in the basic course, we made a horror game. And we decided, let's continue it. Well, basically, in basic course, we made one level, uh, so, but because the code in that level was pretty shit, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we made some changes. Uh, I reworked some things like interaction system and uh, fuse box system, but uh, really no uh, visual updates. Uh, so the main focus was on the level two, which you will see soon and uh, of course using CAS and behavior trees for the AI. Well, I did add some extra details into level one, but you know, that's nothing. <laughs> the idea was to make it scary again. <laughs> so what makes something scary? As I mentioned in the basic course presentation, the unknown. You don't know what's gonna happen and that always scares you more than it ever happening. Like I said, your mind always comes up with the craziest things. <laughs> the other thing, anticipation. I would like to bring up an example from a game I played once. It's a first person shooter, not really horror focused, except for one part, which is basically the main hub of the game. So the hub is basically the player character's own house. He used to be a married man, but his wife sadly passed away. Regardless of that, he still doesn't feel alone in that house. So what happens is, there might be a moment where that dead wife of yours starts haunting you, either by crawling out of the bathroom she died in, or jumping out from outside your window. Even if you know what's gonna happen, you don't know when it's gonna happen, or if it's gonna happen at all. In some ways, I think that's even more terrifying. So how did we, what did we need to pull off the unknown anti-anticipation? We needed atmosphere. Create this sense of unease for you. You are not in a safe environment. Not always relying on jump scares, you know. <laughs> and sound design. You know, people say in a video game, sound design is like a third of the experience. In a horror game, I'd say that's twice as much. <laughs> Thanks. So what went good? Communication. Only two of us, so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> Apart from some incidents where either I wasn't being clear enough or he didn't understand my complete intentions. Happens. If I may say so myself as an observer, I'd say Gavin's programming has definitely improved. Ever partially by uh, adopting the gas system and the uh, behavior trees, and also what he learned from the basic course here, and the web pro course. This is the part where you compliment me now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good job, Simon. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, the level design uh, overall was uh, pretty fascinating, like uh, I, wouldn't be able to come up with these kind of ideas like Simon did. So, yeah. 
I'd say they do pull out the atmosphere I mentioned before. <laughs> Can you pass it now? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> later, later. <laughs> Keep going. What could have been better? There's only two of us. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and that this is something we have serious difficulties with. <laughs> well, like it almost worked, the animation <laughs> for turning the AI, but uh, yeah, we finally decided that we're not going to waste any time on that anymore and, uh, because the whole new level needed to be implemented. Mm -hmm. So we went on with it. It just never looked completely right in the end and it ended up taking too long. So mm -hmm. we had to stick with what we had for now. Mm -hmm. If we had more time, we probably would have made even a third level <laughs> or a longer, longer second level. <coughs> even though I think it'll probably feel quite long as it is now. Might feel, yeah. <laughs> Not getting into details, but <laughs> you'll see it when you play it on either this PC or this one right here. <laughs> the issues with the turning, like we mentioned, mm. as well as some other details we were discussing during development, but never had time to implement correctly. Future. Well, hopefully a full game out of that. And to be more specific, uh, also for the AIs, I think there is a lot of uh, polishes you can do with AI, so it would be even better, scarier. <laughs> so we have a new and improved uh, title screen, as opposed to the static image we had before. There was also a missable detail here that we missed, unfortunately. Even though I'm not sure we would have seen it on this here anyway. You'll see it if you play it. You can adjust the resolution if you wish. It's still kind of low with the sound, but okay. Is there a... Yeah, we have level 1 and level 2, so level 1 is basically the same as the, in the previous course, so... Is one of these a volume button? Yeah, it's... It's, 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 it's maxed. It's maxed. It's maxed. But so, yeah, we have an option to choose uh, which level you want to play, so maybe some of some you... Some of you have beaten level 1 during yeah. basic course. So right now we're going to show the level 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where level 1 left off, basically. You see that gate there, those of you who have beaten it. Mm. And uh, now we have entered some sort of a maintenance area here, as you see. With an uh, obstacle in the way. <laughs> Steam is hot, people. So we need to get it out of the way first. Yeah, this projector does not do this game justice at all. <laughs> That no. might help. Well, your flashlight broke since you fell off a catwalk which collapsed. Yep. And the game stuck now. <laughs> or not. Oh, fuck you. Well, you don't have the correct key card here. <laughs> Very unpleasant. Let's find the key card then. <laughs> Is this the right one now? Here's open, let's find out. Don't have selected them. So there's a pitch black tunnel here that you can't really see on this screen anyway. It's pitch black in there. I need to find the light. The security station's gonna have something. 
You need to find the light source, in other words. Oh, look at that. There's a confiscated camera here in the security booth. Very retro looking, but still. I guess some tourist was taking pictures when he wasn't supposed to, so security took the camera. <laughs> now we have a light source. <laughs> Remember what I said about being alone in the dark? <laughs> you should be more concerned when you're not. But uh, I think that's enough for now. Yep. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Anything else you'll have to experience on your own. On either this computer right here, as soon as this box gets taken out of the way with the projector, <laughs> and the other one there. Some questions. The the camera is limited to take shot or no? Yeah. I can use it unlimited or only is limited to. No, there are no limits to the amount you can use. You just. Yeah, just a cooldown for two seconds. So well, you. Every two seconds. I yeah. Can use it, yeah. Okay. And uh, whoever might be in the dark with you might see that light, so use it sparingly. Mm. I believe right. most of them were static or maybe movable at most. Yeah, movable is that kind of like. Yeah, and perhaps. Well, uh, it was even worse before, so. Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, like yesterday, it was way worse, like <laughs> 15 <laughs> FPS maybe. You were lucky to get double digits in. But then I did some research and I found out that, uh, what was it, the screen capture thing? Like, uh, the camera picture showing up on a monitor. Yeah. That uh, like uh, stole all our FPS, <laughs> but it's still yeah, not the best. Can we have your attention, please? <laughs> hey, everybody. So we are, we're three, team three. I'm Indrek Sermus. This is Egor Raya and Artur Jukola. What's up, guys? <laughs> and um, basically, like, um, we are working on the same project that we had in the first course and uh, trying to build, a, uh, you know, in, into this project, we try to build uh, using the gas and uh, the AIs. And um, we had this idea that um, basically we would have. Um, like a um, team affiliation uh, system uh, where, where we are not controlling basically our, our, uh, our character, but the AI is controlling the character and the enemies. And our char character kind of like performs based on what kind of stats it has and, uh, and RNG basically. And, uh, and there's a random element there and he runs around in the mission and does random stuff every time differently. And, uh, we just hope that the, the guy is uh, performing well and finishes the mission. That's the idea, the concept idea of our project in this course. And um, you want to say something? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for us, it was uh, different this time because uh, we started with two of us. Now we have a third guy. He also made an AI. Uh, what went well? I, I think everything went well because uh, we were able to finish the game as much as it is finished right now. And learn new things, of course. I'll learn a lot of things. I think uh, in the perspective, it was one part of actually building the, the game and 10 parts of learning because we implemented a gas inside the game that was kind of had already a system. So also we had an attribute system. So I had to scrap out almost everything that I had done previously and that uh, to add a new system, 
which is uh, it's a hassle to set up, but once it's set up and once you have done your first ability and if you have set your attributes and figured out the logic, how you want to use them, as that, it's going to be like a lot easier. Adding new features, it's going to be a lot easier, but the first time it's just, it takes time. And I, I had to learn a lot beside the school thing. I had to learn from the internet how to implement the gas and how to use the systems to find, the, I'm not saying best, but find the good ways of using the things that I wanted to use in the game uh, to, to create the mechanics and features we wanted. We were uh, able to finish uh, some of almost everything we actually wanted to do, like one of each, to just to see and test that if they are working, can we, can we actually manage to pull it off? Uh, it feels we can, uh, if we had more time, we could just build more game, the same game. Uh, the time was of essence because uh, not much time. But... Uh, you can tell us what you should put it, what? No, he's already there. You mentioned me the day I worked in the day. What? You can ask me, I can, yeah. No, I said, uh, can you use it, what then, run? Oh, oh he can have a Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking this. <laughs> okay, but so we are just actually. No? Nothing went wrong at all. What? Nothing went wrong at all. Well, With the game, game, you mean? In the process of making the game. Well, I can no, see uh, because. <laughs> wait, second, second. Uh, actually, nothing went wrong because when we started to build the game, at even in the first time, but more so in the second time, in the second course. We actually adopted the mindset that every game development has uh, this golden rule of three. You build one thing, then you have to fix two things, and you probably break three things. And if you accept the mindset that these things happen, you are not going to cry anymore. You just build, fix. It's not about crying. It's about understanding that something went wrong that could have been done better, and you try to improve it next time. It's not about crying. And I can say that something went wrong because you were here after class once and I had to help you to, to guess because you were struggling with that. So saying that nothing was wrong is your lying to yourself and not acknowledge your mistakes and try to be better in the future. No, no, that's not true. Yeah. A lot of people work after hours and that's okay. Yeah, uh, with the teacher's help. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people don't have teachers in their work. Slowly true revealing itself. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, okay, then let's change the question then. What was the thing that you as a group struggled the most? Building the game. Finding time to build it. Uh, Understanding stuff. Uh, what was the thing that as a group you struggled the most during the process of making the game? Uh, C++. C++ part of the building of the game. Mm -hmm. To get, get the C++ stuff working as it's supposed to because we still have some things and nobody can fix them, not even you. Uh, most of you have tried. Uh, the project was uh, blueprint only, the previous? The previous was blueprint only, this time we also have a C++ mm -hmm. because we need to have it if you want to use stability system, right? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it has also, to also also problems and uh, running into some problems that we couldn't uh, find, uh, you know, even try to debug some of the stuff and then we spent a lot of time on some issues that uh, nobody could help us with, which was showing that the, 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 the wrong info. Wrong info, but in the end basically we found out that everything was working uh, but, uh, but the debugger was uh, showing something wrong, so that, that's some of the things that was uh, where, where a lot of time was in, in the on week was there, struggling with that thing. The things we weren't able to figure out, we just built something, some kind of fix to have a workaround of the problem, just to get it work, because that's the main reason, right, to get it work. And of course, trying to solve some of the basic stuff, when, uh, you know, normally when building stuff, like you know, the AI was uh, a challenge also. No communication issues. Well, 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 All the communication we actually did was very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are uh, <laughs> from. <laughs> and who did what? Excuse me? Who did what? Oh, I did the AI. Mm -hmm. uh, Indrek was working with the map, and uh, Egor was mostly working with gas. I did, and the, they had I, did, I did also the main character, uh, artificial intelligence. We try, uh, decided to split up the AI, so uh, Arthur made an enemy AI and Indrek did the main character AI to have different AIs. So they're not the same, so there's like zero chance they act similarly. 
game needs a lot of polish, I'm sure, yes. animations and stuff and everything, but it's just a matter of time, but we don't have it, so we just wanted to make it work. Does it need to be too pretty, right? You want to see the game? We're going to show you. I think it's best to show you. Well, we have a new game, continue game, and quit game. That's because we don't want you to cheat and save game, exit if like mission fails for some reason. So you actually cannot save the game and exit the game and then load it again. Every time you quit the game, it's going to just save it. So we start the new game. This is the good old hideout that everybody knows already, I'm sure. So you can walk around here, you can use your computer to do shopping, stuff. Uh, choose the missions that we actually don't have yet connected here, because it doesn't matter, we have to change it, everything. There's an old system still in the game, but most of it is unblocked because of the new systems we had to build. So I just made a, a quick hard here, so we can actually check the uh, different levels, uh, walk around. The one thing I struggled lately now was to actually save the attributes because we are using different maps with characters and we don't use a player controller for all the characters on one map the, there's a different character with different uh, it's an AI controller so I wasn't able to just easily save the attributes somewhere so we had to make a system to actually get the attributes save them in a save file and every time I change the map I had to load them and apply them with gameplay effect but it works there's a quirk somehow came in now because we did a lot of changes today uh, because we just get the main mission like a few days ago the main mission map in readied it now we we were building on it to get it working so we did a lot of changes something somewhere just uh, went off and it doesn't save for some reason uh, some things but most of the stuff works so we also have some I'm not sure if we have sound we have toilet you can flash, that you don't hear, I think. So, yeah, so we have a broken path, you can fix it later on, not today, we don't have time. Uh, so I'm going to show you the mission one, that's, that's the most important thing right now. So you, right now you can move around, but we, we are just figuring out uh, how the camera should be, maybe follow the player somehow. You can just walk around, but the player is, is here. He has his points where he randomly goes to check out uh, what's where, like the boxes here. He's going to check for some loot. So he walks around. These are naked guys are here. They are enemies. So now that uh, they have seen each other, they start to fight. And it seems like our character actually lost the map. So let's start again. We also have a quite sneaky button here, it's apply stims, and this stim is going to increase your uh, melee skill. I'm going to pump it up a lot, so I'm gonna be a lot stronger next time. You can actually find the stims in the map, and when you find them, you can actually use them. You can decide they are, they're going to have a duration, so you actually can choose when you want to use the stim. So the character is going to use the stim, he's going to hit faster, he's going to hit stronger. But for some reason he's uh, acting weirdly sometimes. We're also missing uh, animations in the packed game. We have them in the engine. But I think it's something to do with the gameplay cues. Gameplay cue is not working on the character. Actually, every time they get hit, they, get hit, they are playing animation that like they are hurting and their head moves back. But anyway, this guy is running around in the places. Every time it's, it's different. Like the route that he's going to take. AI is very sophisticated, uh, every time he's deciding does he want to have a contact with enemy, does he want to fight with the enemy, and making the decision based on the environment, or just bug, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> the camera movement is quite, uh, it's quite hard to figure out how the camera should move, because we actually in the game we don't want to show you these uh, blue parts, so camera should be always like showing the map, but it also have to, have to show the character. And now the character has gone all the points, uh, killed the enemies that came into his way, and now he's going to extract. He goes, uh, goes to the corner of the map, and now he's back in the hideout. There's gonna be some uh, 
the cutscenes or something between it. Maybe some mission so it tells you how many you killed, what you got, what you found in the raid. You get money. Okay. You actually take the mission because you have a job to do there. Like you have to find or retrieve something, you get money for it. And the money you can use to buy yourself uh, food, stims, medicines, uh, junk. You can like different objects. Do you junk. have food or stuff in game right now? Uh, we have, but I have disconnected most of the stuff because uh, I have attributes, but I had different food system. We start buying food and getting the food away from it, but then I started to use the attribute system. So it's a different system. I have to make mm -hmm. abilities mm -hmm. and the stuff. And uh, so I actually have two systems, both of them not finished. Like one I have to disconnect, and the other one I haven't had time to finish. Uh, it feels quite simple game, and it actually is. It's very easy to play, and uh, it doesn't look much. But I can assure you, there's a lot of shit going on under the hood. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, and uh, oh, microphone. Mm, what's there? Yeah. So um, yeah, we had some future plans that we would like to continue this game also to add a bunch of uh, you know like choices you can do during the mission to pick up some extra stuff like you know like there would be like a risk and reward thing where uh, some point in the corner of the map there would be like a little bit you know more uh, enemies or stronger enemies. And uh, we could have a choice whether we want to risk it and go and try and find something better from there, for example. And then our AI will go and fight those guys. And, and when he wins, you know, he can find something like, like a wrench or, or some other appliances that he can use to fix the shower at home, which would later then, you know, be used to, you know, uh, add uh, to the stats or, or, you know, whatever we can come up with. So something like that. Uh, maybe it wasn't obvious uh, how this attribute system works, but we have skills. We have a melee skill, range skill, that is for guns. So the more you uh, level the skill, or anyway, for now we are using the stim, like the stimulator that you can actually use to get your melee up for some, I don't know, 10 minutes. And this is going to raise your base value of the skill with a gameplay effect. And when the skill is higher, you are going to do more damage and your animation of punching is going to be faster. So it's all already built inside it, everything works. And like making new abilities, making different whatever attacks, it's going to be, next time it's going to be way less uh, time consuming. Because first time it was figuring out, second time you just copy, change some stuff out and it works. And the base, uh, like, the, like the game loop of the game, is that you have to get money to get food, get stuff, you can repair your hideout, and you have to do missions to earn money, and to be able to successfully finish the missions, you actually have to get stronger. Like, you have to train yourself, because every time you get, uh, if you get better stats, you have bigger chance of surviving the mission. It was quite easy for now, okay, we died once, but I used a lot of stims, but actually in gameplay you're not going to be able to use so many stims, and you have to work a little bit more to get your uh, melee skill higher to beat the first level. But the plan is to make 10 levels, so they're gonna be a lot harder. So each, mi each mission is for one attribute, right? Or no? Uh, actually no, but we just want to have first few missions to use only melee, but as your missions progresses, you go to the different places, you're gonna see the enemies that uses guns. Mm -hmm. now, we haven't actually decided at what point you are going to start to use ranged weapons, like guns, but maybe it's the first time you see an actual enemy with a gun, and if you kill it, you can get his gun, and after that, you can start to use gun. So you can actually choose to want to use gun, or you want to use maybe hammer, or train martial arts, because uh, using guns is, you, you can't have infinite ammo, you have to find it somewhere, or you get the reward, so like two or three bullets for the mission. It's all about balancing how much you can use actually the overpower because the range weapon of this, uh, in this game it's, it's way too easy for AI to shoot, uh, aim and shoot. So we are going to make a logic if, uh, if AI is going to miss or we are not going to give you enough bullets so you can always use gun. You have to always calculate and decide what should be the best way to handle the next mission. And if you can't handle the next mission, you come back to hideout, you are deeply injured, you have to heal yourself and you can maybe try some easier mission to grind some money and 
There's also the looming risk of the stun ability. Yeah, there's a bear mode. There's also that will F up your game and you have to start all over again. We haven't decided because we had a plan, but because of we actually had to use AI in this project, so we decided we are going to make different mission system. Last time it was supposed to be just a check to see if your attributes and stats are, are good enough so you can pass, but now we have this AI minigame that you actually have to, have to play a lot of against an AI. Any questions? And it's a little bit of shame that the sounds didn't work because there's like also the, you know, there's uh, actually, uh, I think it's pretty cool that we added, there's like a stepping sounds on the grass, there's different, you know, on the concrete, concrete different, there's a, a part where there's like metal, you can step on the metal, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and music also, different music and stuff for the different levels, you know. Okay. 